In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, you, um, the second reading got sh- cut a little bit short uh, when it was, but believe me, you'll be hearing about it more as I go on because I'm preaching on the second reading. So, all right. Now, if you've ever complained, and who among us hasn't at one time or another, that the Bible has way too much to say about, you know, sinning, you know, to sinning, and all the things wrong with the human condition, the book of Philemon might be to your taste. The situation, you see, that we heard about today was embarrassing. Another man's property turned up in Paul's prison cell. One morning, Paul woke up to find himself in possession of stolen goods, a dealer in contraband. Now, the contraband item that found its way into Paul's prison was at least useful. It was useful property. This property, though, was a person. Well, not actually a person, a slave. According to the law, a non-person, again, a piece of property. The slave's name was Onesimus. Cute name for a slave because it meant useful. It was kind of like an advertisement, if you will. I mean, they named cars, right, to get our blood flowing, Charger, Dancer, Dasher, Mustang, Stingray, Explorers, Land Rovers, you know, all that stuff to kind of get our blood flowing ready to, to purchase. Well, the same way, slaves were named to advertise their virtues. Um, Onsiphrius was named, was meant profitable, or Aphroditus, lovely, and Onesimus, useful. It was, however, not among the virtue of slaves to run away, and Onesimus had run away. When caught, Onesimus could be branded across the forehead, you know, something that would scar him as a fugitive forever. He could be flogged, He could even be executed as a lesson to all the other slaves. Onesimus was property. He could be disposed of in any way his owner found, well, useful. Now, his owner was Philemon, to whom Paul's letter is addressed. Now, we don't know why Onesimus had run away. Maybe Onesimus was just simply tired of being useful. Maybe he was sick of just merely being looked at as a piece of property, an item on Philemon's inventory, a non-person under the law, a nothing, if you will, in the eyes of those who saw him. Maybe, maybe Onesimus wanted something more, something other than being manipulated by the whims of powerful people who made the laws. So Onesimus ran away. And he ran straight to Paul, who was in prison. And Paul was glad to have him, all right. I mean, glad to have someone who was useful. Glad to have someone with him. I mean, it does get lonely in prison. And glad to have someone who could take care of him. The relationship was an affectionate one. I mean, Paul calls Onesimus my my child and my very heart. But, of course, Paul knew something had to be done. I mean, Paul was in enough trouble with the law as it was. Aiding and abetting an escaped slave would not help Paul's legal situation. And neither, frankly, would it help the Christian faith, which is already suspect of being subversive. Besides, Philemon was a friend. Philemon was a fellow Christian. And if being in possession with stolen goods wasn't embarrassing enough, It was doubly awkward when the stolen goods belonged to a friend. I mean, Paul would have liked very much to keep Onesimus with him. The man, of course, was useful after all. But he knew he really shouldn't, and he really couldn't. But what could Paul do? Well, no, Paul, uh, Onesimus needed to go back and make things right. So Paul sent Onesimus back with a letter. Now, Paul could have sent a letter pleading for forgiveness for Onesimus. People wrote letters like that all the time for escaped slaves and indentured servants. They did that stuff all the time. 
But Paul's letter doesn't scold or plead for forgiveness. Paul didn't tell Philemon at the, and the church at Philemon's house what they, what they should do. Instead, what Paul wrote was a letter reminding those people of their goodness and their graciousness and their love. He said, quote, I thank God always, and I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith of which you have toward the Lord Jesus and all of the saints. And I pray that sharing your faith may promote the knowledge of all that is good in ours in Christ. All the good that is ours in Christ, Paul said. And then, Paul makes it clear that he's going to entrust Onesimus to all this good that is ours. Paul commands their goodness. Paul trusts in their goodness, you know, to all the good that is ours in Christ. You know, to, you know, the, the one he calls, my, my child, my very heart. You see, Paul begins his letter to Philemon thanking God for the love and goodness of all these people in Philemon's house, you know, the early church. Paul is doing this as a way of pointing out something very crucial to his, underst his own understanding of the gospel of Christ. See, Paul believes there is power at work among us and within us, that makes goodness and decency, and decency not only a possibility, but expected and predictable and reliable. And then he closes his letter saying, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. You see, Paul believes that those who come to Christ finds a new life in Christ's spirit, which not, not only empowers them to be kind and loving and generous, but it makes smallness and meanness and selfish, selfishness an impossible possibility. Impossible because of the victory of Christ over sin. Christ has conquered sin. Sin no longer has any power over us, according to Paul. Sin is not and can never be more powerful than Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ has defeated sin once and for all, and it is a beaten and defeated thing. No, sin no longer has any power over us. No longer any power over, over us, even though we may be weak, even though we are fully human, even though we are confused, even though we are tempted and we chase after the dead and defeated things, sin has no longer has any power over us at all. Oh, finally, we can speak of Onesimus as mine and as property and as useful. But Paul, Paul speaks of Onesimus as my child, my heart. Because for Paul, we Christians, we are all brothers and sisters. We are all drenched in the shower of God's love and goodness. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, it, it pushes us towards what is good and what is just and what is decent and what is kind. Oh yeah, we all have that choice to be small and mean, self-serving and selfish. We can choose to make possible what is otherwise impossible. And often, all too often, we try, we try to do it alone. We try to do it by our own reason or strength. Oh, yeah. We try to do it alone. In fact, we do it alone. But then we wind up the same way. We wind up alone. But, but when we reach for all the good that is ours, as Paul said, we discover that everything in our lives leans in that direction. See, Paul's understanding of the victory of Christ over sin and the drive of the Spirit for good makes it sound as though doing good takes less effort than being selfish. You know, when we do the right thing, right? 
That, that it's simply because it is the right thing to do. That there's a, there, there's a freedom in doing the right thing. There's a lightness in doing the right thing that, that buoys us. Doing the right thing means we don't have to worry about the consequences. We don't have to worry about reward or no rewards because my brothers and sisters in the faith, we have freedom. Freedom in Christ. Ah, but we do the right thing then effortlessly we float on the buoyancy of the Spirit of God who is generous to everyone and gracious to all. And Paul, you see, wants Philemon to discover that freedom, to to enjoy that freedom and then share that freedom with others. Paul also wants to free Philemon from worrying about the, the little things. So what Paul does later on in the reading is he basically sends Philemon a blank check. He says, he says, quote, if Onesimus has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, I I write this with my own hand. I will repay it. Ah, sending a blank check through the mail. Talk about trusting goodness. But there's freedom here. There's exuberant freedom here. And when you are free, then you will know, quote, all the good that is ours. Then you can have all kinds of wonderful celebrations. Now, of course, no one knows if they had a celebration when Onesimus finally made his way back to Philemon's house. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. We don't know what happened. Once there was a professor at, at, who did a series of lectures on Philemon at, Col- at the Columbia Theological uh, Seminary, uh, and he came back one morning and he found this note on his, on his podium. And the note read, Dear Paul, on- Onesimus arrived before your letter did. Sorry about that. Signed Philemon. And we know that didn't happen. But I kept wondering what happened, though. What, what truly did happen? Now, Paul, remember, is dealing with some pretty knotty problems here. Personal property, personal freedom, slavery, and the whole societal system that, that, de- that assumes slavery. So the only thing Paul really did in his letter was to remind people of, quote, all the good that is ours in Christ. Paul simply reminded people that, that just as they had been kind and decent and generous and just before, he trusted that God's Spirit would bring them to the point, the same point in the matter of Onesimus. Paul wrote, quote, Receive him just as you would receive me. Receive my very heart. And then he closes with, with saying, Knowing that you will do even more than I say. Even more than I say, Paul wrote. More than I say. Boy, it is hard to trust that. It's hard even for me to trust that, but I, for one, would very much like to learn. So, my family of faith, let us give praise and thanksgiving to the one who, by the power at work within us, is able to do far more abundantly than we could independently ever dream of. Do the work for, of the, to the one who, with the power at work within us, is able to do things far more abundantly than we could ever even ask for. The one who does all of this, our Lord and Savior Jesus, who truly is the Christ. Amen.